Hey guys, I am Ken Ross here. I'm a business consultant that specializes in reducing costs for businesses by looking at their essential expenses. But today, I'm actually gonna give you some really great tech tips today. It involves something I'm very passionate about, something I think that really helps my productivity. And I think a lot of you uh, may not know about it or haven't heard about it. And if you have heard about it, it's something that you think is very unattainable. But I'm here to help you today. And that is, of course, Inbox Zero. What I hope to do here is I hope to give you some easy tips on how to implement this today and also help you achieve very quickly Inbox Zero uh, concepts and be able to grow into this because ultimately this is a mental mind shift. I know when I started looking at emails or I got into emails and productivity, it's really hard to stay focused when you get in an inbox because it's your work life or your life in an inbox. And there are lots of things that can distract you. Inbox Zero has this concept that you are only concerned about the inbox, what's in the inbox, as the new stuff. And that, that new stuff gets put away and your life in mail is much easier. You don't have to spend a lot of time looking at stuff that could take your attention away from the things that you're out to do. Because ultimately email should be a tool for you. So let's get right into it. Okay, so first up, I wanna tell you a little bit about Merlin Mann. He's a guy who actually came up with the concept of Inbox Zero way back in 2004. Now, I was actually introduced to this very early on, I'd say about 2006 or 2007 or so. Um, a, a great IT architect that I know, he introduced me to this concept. He goes, look, I'm, I'm adopting Inbox Zero and let me tell you a little bit about it. And he started going into some of these things and I kind of looked at him and thought he was crazy. Um, but he had started adopting it and it was actually producing a good result for him. He spent less time in his inbox. He was much more concerned about getting certain things done and looking for those things as they come in. He was always seemed at least to be very responsive to his emails. So there was really no change there because, because in the end, a lot of folks, they think that emails or different forms of communications require instant kind of response. Well, you're not going to really be able to do that. That's, that's something that's, that's very unattainable. <laughs> For a lot of folks, that's something that's kind of overwhelming, right? That you would assume that someone read your full email and understood you fully. That's not how it works. Emails work in a conversational style. You see a lot of uh, email clients these days, they have all the replies and you can see the whole history of all the emails nowadays. And that, that definitely applies to the style or, or kind of how email is supposed to be viewed, right? Is conversations, streams of thoughts and consciousness to get in, getting to doing things. And Merlin Mann at the time, he kind of knew this. He knew this was the concept back in that, that day. And, and um, as, th as email has evolved, Inbox Zero has definitely stood the test of time when it comes to how to look at email, how to process those things. And so I'm out to actually give you kind of the concepts of what Inbox Zero is, and then some very easy tips. And then I will also post uh, in, the, in the description of this video below, different resources you can go to, to really get down to specific details. I really do feel like what's important is to understand the, the, the aspect of Inbox Zero. So let's get into that. Okay, so the next thing you need to understand is that there are five main things that you should think about when you look at an email in an inbox, and that's delete, defer, delegate, respond, or do, right? So every time you get an email, you have to think in your inbox. I'm gonna definitely preface it with that, and, and, I'll, and I'll tell you why in a second. One of those five things need to come to your mind. Do I need to delete this right away? Just delete it. If it's something that really isn't important to you, say it's some spam email from some unknown place or from a place that maybe you've actually subscribed to on accident or was subscribed to you on accident and you're trying to get through your inbox, just delete it. Another aspect to that is you could just archive it. And in the case of Inbox Zero, what you would do is either use the 
built-in archive feature like in Gmail or other mail clients or create a folder called archive and just move it to archive. Next thing is defer, right? What does defer mean? It just means I need to get it out of my inbox and I need to look at it later. Or I need to follow up on it later because, hey, this requires some attention outside of the scope of trying to get to inbox zero. I need time to, to either process what this email is saying so that I can respond, or I just really need to defer all of this till I get more information from other places. So that's where you wanna defer things. And ultimately, in the case of inbox zero, that's really left up to you how you do that. But in a lot of cases, and especially for myself, what I like to do is I like to organize some of my deferred emails into different folders, which are streams of consciousness. If I'm working on a, several different projects, I may have several different streams of deferred emails in various folders in my mail client. People go in different directions with this, um, and Merlin Mann actually just, ref just basically uh, suggests that you re defer all your emails to one inbox. And that, that to me doesn't really seem like that would help um, in keeping things better organized uh, because I like to organize things by what I'm working on. And if I'm waiting for certain things from some, some people, I like to defer that stream of consciousness to that folder so that when I go to that folder and I look through it, it's emails I know all pertain to a specific topic and it's been deferred because I know that's where I put it. The next part I'm gonna talk about is delegate. This is really important. Delegate kind of pairs along with defer because what you're doing is you're sending this email off to someone else for them to get more information, for, for them to actually do something with it. And then you need to archive or defer or put that email somewhere else other than your inbox. You're not allowing the, the emails in your inbox to just sit around because, hey, I forwarded it to somebody and that somebody is supposed to do something with it. And, and of course, I'm responsible enough to want to follow up on those things, but I don't need it as a distraction. Delegate the responsibility to somebody else, but then defer the rest of that somewhere else. So the next, uh, the next concept is respond. Now, this is a lot like delegate, except for respond is more just on you. Right? You're responding to a, an audience of people or you're responding to, to people in hopes that this gets the ball rolling or keeps the stream of consciousness to get together enough so that you can come to a solution. Right? A response to an email doesn't necessarily mean that that is a done email. That, we're in a conversation here. So your response is important, but it, but it also shouldn't be very stressful. If an email is more than three paragraphs, I try my best to slim it down even more. And the way I do that is through different techniques. I'll create a document and attach it to an email, or I'll just say, hey, contact me later because I really wanna talk about these other things. The, the reason I do that is because what I want the respondent to see is, hey, I've put some thought into the response, but there's really things we need to do here. When you respond to an email, understand that a response to an email, even if it's two or three lines or one sentence, is a response. And it's part of the conversation. It doesn't have to end there. Respond quickly to emails that you can respond to with either the question or a short answer or some way to keep the conversation the stream of consciousness going. Don't worry about solving it. That's not something we're out to do here. Uh, when it comes to inbox zero, what you're out to do is be able to respond to an email and then defer it or delete it or do something else with it so that it's not in the inbox. It doesn't distract you. It's not something you have to then say, hey, have I checked all my emails? Have I followed up with everyone? You know, because your inbox is empty. Okay, so the last thing is do. Now, there's a difference between respond and do. The reason do is separate in the minds of most people when it comes to inbox zero is doing actually requires that you've done some other thing outside of just the inbox. I can certainly still respond to an email after I've done something, but doing something actually 
is what email is all about, right? The whole reason you communicate with someone via email is that hopefully some other process outside of mail gets done. Email is just a communication application. It's just something to communicate a message to. It's not something that can actually do something for you on your behalf. Doing in this, in this instance is you doing something as a result of sending, of receiving an email, right? So do as that. All right, hey guys, Ken Ross here on the editing floor as I'm doing this video, I realized this should really be in two parts. So this is part one, I finished part one. Stay tuned for part two. I know I leave you on suspense here. I kind of give you the overview of what Inbox Zero is. Next video, I'm actually going to show you some practical tips, some things you can actually do to achieve Inbox Zero. And these are things that I do all the time. And actually, if you are really interested, my inbox is at zero today, so I'm excited about that. And I'm excited to share with you how I achieved that. So stay tuned to this channel. Please like and subscribe and share this video with, uh, with all your friends. And visit my website, IamKenRoss.com. And until I see you next time, I'll see you around.